In March of 2023, astronomers at the European Southern Observatory detected something unusual. Not a comet, not an asteroid, a perfectly spherical object, roughly eight meters in diameter, drifting in a polar orbit around Earth, silent, metallic, and utterly unregistered in any known satellite database. They called it the Buga Sphere. For three weeks, the World Space Agencies watched it. They measured it. They listened. And then buried in archive telemetry, from the 1980s, someone found a match. A probe launched by humans decades ago. But here's the problem. We never launched anything like it. Let's go back to the beginning. On March 14th, 2023, Dr. Sofia Navarro, an astrophysicist stationed at the La Silla Observatory in Chile, was conducting a routine sky survey. The project was part of the NEO Observation Network, a global effort to track near-Earth objects, particularly those that might pose collision risks. At 2.34 UTC, her detection software flagged something. An object. High albedo. Circular cross-section. Altitude approximately 1,200 kilometers. Orbital inclination 87 degrees, nearly polar. At first, Navarro assumed it was space debris. Old satellites, rocket stages, fragments from past missions, they're everywhere, drifting like ghosts in the graveyard of low Earth orbit. But this object wasn't tumbling, it wasn't fragmenting, it moved with precision. Within hours, observatories in Australia, South Africa, and Hawaii confirmed the sighting. By the following morning, NASA's Jet Propulsion Laboratory had added it to their tracking catalog under the designation 2023 E447. Publicly, it was labeled unidentified orbital debris. Privately, engineers started asking questions, because when they ran spectroscopic analysis, examining the light reflected off its surface, they found something unexpected. The sphere wasn't made of aluminum or titanium, the materials commonly used in satellite construction. It was coated in beryllium copper alloy, a material rarely used in modern spacecraft, but common in certain experimental probes from the late Cold War era. The kind of probes built for deep space endurance, the kind designed to survive for decades. And that's when the real mystery began. Dr. Yuki Tanaka, a data historian working with the SETI Institute, became involved almost by accident. Tanaka specializes in something most people don't even know exists, space mission archaeology. She spends her days combing through old hard drives, declassified documents, forgotten server backups, anything that might contain lost data from early space exploration. When news of the Buga sphere started circulating in academic circles, Tanaka had a hunch. She'd seen beryllium copper alloys mentioned before, in old NASA procurement records, in design specs from the late 1970s and early 80s. So she started digging. Three days later, in a digitized archive of the Goddard Space Flight Center, she found it. A technical schematic, dated 1981, project designation Buga 1. Mission status cancelled. The document was sparse, only 11 pages, most of them redacted or incomplete. But what remained told a strange story. Buga 1 was designed as an experimental communications relay, intended to be deployed during a planned space shuttle mission. Its objective was to test a novel concept, autonomous orbital correction using magnetic field interaction rather than chemical propulsion. The idea was ahead of its time, too experimental, too expensive. According to the file, the project was scrapped in 1983 before any hardware was ever launched. But here's where things get strange. Tanaka cross-referenced the telemetry signature from 2023 E447, the Buga sphere, with archived radio frequency logs from the 1980s. And she found a match. In August of 1986, a Swedish radio observatory recorded a brief, unidentified transmission. The frequency was unusual, 327.4 megahertz, a band rarely used by satellites at the time. The signal lasted only 14 seconds. It contained no intelligible data, but its waveform structure was identical to the modulation pattern described in the Buga-1 technical specs. 
Someone, somewhere, had launched it. And now, 37 years later, it had come home. Dr. Marcus Wei, a senior aerospace engineer formerly with the Planetary Society, was one of the first independent researchers to publicly analyze the Bugosphere data. In a detailed report shared with the scientific community in April 2023, Wei proposed three possible explanations. Hypothesis 1, the silent launch. During the height of the Cold War, both the United States and the Soviet Union conducted numerous classified space missions. It's possible, we suggest, that Buga-1 was never truly cancelled, but instead launched quietly, perhaps as a piggyback payload on a military satellite. If true, the probe could have been placed in a highly elliptical orbit, one that took it far beyond Earth's immediate vicinity, only to gradually decay and return decades later due to gravitational perturbations. Hypothesis 2. The Forgotten Prototype Alternatively, the sphere might be a flight test article, a functional prototype built and launched during the development phase of a larger program. Sometimes, experimental hardware was jettisoned or abandoned in orbit after initial testing, then lost in the bureaucratic shuffle as programs were restructured or defunded. In this scenario, the Buga sphere is simply a relic, a technological ghost. Hypothesis 3. The Return Protocol this is where things get speculative, but intriguing. Wei points to a curious detail in the Buga-1 schematic, a reference to something called autonomous return sequencing. The phrase appears only once, in a margin note, with no further explanation. Could the probe have been designed, from the very beginning, to return to Earth after a set period of time? If so, why? What mission profile would require a satellite to leave, survive in deep space for decades, and then deliberately come back. Dr. Elena Ruiz, an orbital mechanics specialist at the Space Telescope Science Institute, offered her own interpretation during an interview published in Science Frontiers Quarterly. She said if the Buga sphere was designed to return, then we're not looking at a communications relay. We're looking at a sample return mission. But instead of retrieving material from another world, it might have been gathering data from space itself, cosmic radiation profiles, micrometeorite density, long-term exposure to the solar wind. Things we couldn't measure any other way in the 1980s. It's a compelling idea, but it raises another question. If the Buga sphere was meant to return, who was supposed to retrieve it? Close your eyes for a moment and imagine this. It's August, 1986. Somewhere above the Earth, in the cold silence of space, a small sphere detaches from its carrier. There's no fanfare, no announcement, just a soft mechanical click, and then release. It tumbles for a moment, stabilizes, and begins to drift. Sunlight glints off its surface, a dull bronze sheen. The beryllium copper shell, designed to withstand temperature extremes, reflects the pale blue curve of the planet below. Then. Slowly, its orbit begins to shift, not through rocket thrust, through something subtler. Magnetic coils embedded in its frame interact with Earth's magnetosphere, generating tiny forces. Over days, weeks, months, these forces accumulate. The sphere's trajectory bends, rises. It climbs higher, past the crowded lanes of low Earth orbit, past the satellites, into the silence. Years pass. The sphere drifts through the radiation belts, through streams of charged particles flung outward by solar storms. Its sensors, if it has any, record everything. Temperature, radiation flux, micrometeorite impacts. It travels farther than its designers ever disclosed. Perhaps it swings past the moon. Perhaps it ventures into deep cislunar space, that vast and empty region between worlds. For 37 years, it endures. No signals. No contact, just patience. And then something changes. A timer, buried deep in its circuitry, reaches zero. The magnetic coils activate again. The sphere begins to fall, not chaotically, but deliberately, following a programmed descent corridor, spiraling back toward the planet that launched it. By March 2023, it's home. 
orbiting silently, waiting. But waiting for what? On April 2nd, 2023, radio astronomers at the Arecibo Successor Project in Puerto Rico detected something unusual. A transmission, faint, intermittent, coming from the bogosphere. The signal operated on the same frequency logged in 1986, 327.4 MHz, but this time it lasted longer, nearly 43 minutes. The data wasn't encrypted, it wasn't compressed, it was raw telemetry, structured in an antiquated format used by early NASA deep space probes. Dr. Amara Okonkwo, a communications engineer who assisted in decoding the signal, described it as hauntingly simple. She said it's like listening to a voice from the past. The probe is reporting its status, power levels, internal temperature, orientation, just like it was programmed to do. But there's no destination address, no command receiver. It's just talking, like it doesn't know we've forgotten about it. The telemetry revealed several key facts. The sphere's internal clock had been running continuously since 1986. Its power source, likely a radioisotope, thermoelectric generator, or RTG, was still functional, though degraded. Its orientation thrusters had fired over 14,000 times during its journey, making minute corrections. It had experienced at least two significant micrometeorite impacts, both on its lower hemisphere. But the most striking detail, embedded in the telemetry stream was a repeating sequence, a 16-digit hexadecimal code. No one knew what it meant. Cryptographers analyzed it. Software historians searched old code bases. Nothing matched. Until someone noticed something odd. When the hexadecimal sequence was converted into ASCII text, a basic character encoding system, it spelled out a phrase. Archive received. Received from where? Let's step back and consider what we know. An experimental probe, possibly launched in secret during the Cold War, designed to return autonomously after decades in space, transmitting a message that suggests it received something, data, instructions, or information we don't understand. If this object truly is a human creation, then it represents a lost chapter of our own history, a secret mission whose purpose was buried, forgotten, or deliberately obscured. But there's another interpretation, one that a small but growing number of researchers are beginning to entertain. What if the bugosphere isn't entirely ours? Doctor. Jonathan Marsh, an astrobiologist and advocate for technosignature research, published an essay in late 2023 titled The Returned Artifact Hypothesis. In it, he proposes a thought experiment. Imagine an advanced civilization monitoring our solar system. They observe humanity's first steps into space, our satellites, our probes, our radio signals. Curious, they decide to interact, not through direct contact, which might cause panic or misunderstanding, but through mimicry. They create an object that looks like something we might have built. They place it in orbit during a period of intense space activity. They let it drift, observing our reaction. Decades later, they send it back, not as an invasion, not as a threat, as a question. Do you remember this? Do you recognize yourselves? It's speculative, unproven, maybe even unlikely, but it asks something important. How well do we really know our own artifacts? Space agencies have lost track of missions before. Documentation has been misplaced, destroyed, or classified beyond retrieval. Entire satellite programs from the Cold War remain unacknowledged. If someone showed you a photograph of a 40-year-old probe and asked, is this ours? Could you be certain? The bugosphere isn't just a mystery. It's a mirror. It reflects back at us our own ambitions, our secrecy, our hubris, and our hope. In the decades since the height of the space age, we've become accustomed to thinking of space as something we've conquered. We send rovers to Mars, we deploy telescopes that peer across billions of light years. We plan missions to the outer planets, to asteroids, to the moons of Jupiter. But every so often, the universe reminds us, we are not in control. We are explorers in a realm far larger, far older, and far stranger than we can fully comprehend. 
The Buga Sphere, whether human or otherwise, represents the ultimate paradox of discovery. Sometimes, the thing you find is something you lost. And sometimes, what you lost was never really yours to begin with. There's a psychological term for this feeling, animoia, nostalgia for a time you've never known. When we look at the Buga Sphere, we feel it. A strange ache. A sense that we've seen this before. That we've been here before. Maybe that's what the probe is really transmitting. Not data. Not coordinates. Memory. A reminder that space isn't just a frontier to conquer. It's a place where the past, present, and future exist all at once. Layered. Entangled. Waiting to be understood. As of late 2024, the Buga Sphere remains in orbit. NASA has officially designated it as object of interest pending classification. The European Space Agency has requested telemetry access. Private aerospace companies have expressed interest in retrieval missions, though the cost and complexity remain prohibitive. No government has claimed ownership. In June 2023, a coalition of independent researchers launched an open source investigation, pooling satellite tracking data, historical documents, and signal analysis. They've published their findings on a public database, inviting collaboration from engineers, historians, and amateur astronomers worldwide. Their working conclusion? The Buga Sphere is most likely a human-made object, but one whose origins have been obscured by time, bureaucracy, and the chaotic nature of Cold War era space programs, but most likely isn't certainty. And in the absence of certainty, wonder fills the gap. Some researchers have proposed sending a rendezvous mission, a small satellite equipped with cameras and sensors, designed to approach the sphere, examine it up close, and potentially retrieve samples or data logs. Others argue we should leave it alone. Let it orbit. Let it transmit. Let it be a reminder. Because maybe the real value of the Buga sphere isn't in solving the mystery. Maybe it's in living with it. There's a photograph taken by the Hubble Space Telescope in 1995. It's called the Pillars of Creation, towering columns of gas and dust in the Eagle Nebula 